Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over a technique you can use on Mac to share files from your Mac to other computers. So I'll put a link in the description of my website where I have some of these commands that I'm typing in so you can copy and paste them from my site. So what we're doing is we're setting up a web server on our Mac and we will serve files on essentially a web page. So I have two commands here. I have python 3-m space http dot server space and then 8080 and then I have python space dash m space simple http server space 8080. So the top one you can use with Python 3, the bottom you can use with Python 2. So if you're on a modern computer, you can probably use the top one, but I want to include the bottom one in case you're on older hardware. So I'll copy this command and then I'll open up a terminal. If you don't know how to open up a terminal, you can type command spacebar and then type in terminal and hit enter and that will open up your terminal. You can also find the terminal application in your applications folder and then utilities. So I have the terminal open, but I'm in my home directory. If I type pwd, we can see the full path there. And I want to go to my desktop because I have some files on my desktop. So I'll type cd space desktop, enter, I'll clear my screen here, and then I'll paste in that command. So when you run this, this will set up a web server with the files in this directory, which is my desktop, and it'll include folders and everything. So you wouldn't want to put this in a private location where you have private files and folders. And it can also look a little messy as we'll see in a second here. So most people would probably want to create a web server folder and then just put the files in there that you want to share. So if you're a teacher or professor and you want to share, say a pig video file, you could put that in a directory and share that directory out and then other people can access it. So I'll hit enter here and this starts up our web server. So now we need to be able to tell people how to access it on our LAN. So you can open up system preferences. So I'll type command space and then I'll type system preferences. I'll just type starting sys and that will open it up. And then you can go to network and here it will tell us our IP address. So I have it right here. I'll just select that, I'll copy it with Command C, close this window, and I'll open up Safari. And I've already opened this up on localhost. So on the computer you're sharing it on, you can just write localhost colon 8080. But on other computers, you can go in here and you can put the IP address. So we have 192.168.7.176 colon 8080. And this 8080 can be anything above, I think it's 1024, uh, up to 65536, I think is the limit. So you could have this be 9,000 or whatever, but 8080 is kind of common, 8,000 is kind of common. So that just needs to match up with what we put here. So I'll hit enter here, we have the same thing. So if you go to another computer, you do that and you'll see all these same files here. So I have a number of different files here for samples. I have airplane.jpg, so if I hit that, this will show up in the browser because JPEG is recognized by a web browser. I have a video file here. So this is not opening here. The browser can't natively read this. So what you can then do is go up here to file and then say save as, and then you can save this file out. I'll hit back here. I also have a PNG down here. Now text files will show up right in the browser. So we're reading the text file directly. I have a PDF here that will display in the browser. So I'm using Safari here, but this could be on any uh, Mac, PC, Linux, Raspberry Pi, iPad, iPhone, Android phone, Android tablet, anything with a web browser on the LAN that can access a page on another machine. So you could even go on a device like a Nintendo Wii or a PlayStation that has a web browser, any of even old devices, and you can access files on your Mac. And this also works with very large files. So I'll go down here and I'll say control C to exit this, and then I'll type CD, I'll hit enter. That will take me to my home directory. Then I'll type CD space downloads. I'll clear my screen here. And now I'll press the up arrow till I have that command again. Okay, I'll hit enter. And now we have our downloads folder. So if I refresh this, this will show me the files in my downloads folder. So I have these large Wikipedia files. I'll click on one of these and you'll see it downloads very quickly. That's because I'm on the machine I'm serving it from, but this would also share relatively quickly to other computers. So I'll hit clear there. I'll go here. Now when it downloads, it sees the files already there, so it doesn't create a second copy. So I'm going to switch over to my iPad and I'll show you what it's like on there. Okay, so I'm on my iPad here. I've entered in the IP address of my MacBook. It does hide the port here, but I do have port 8080, colon 8080 at the end of this IP address. And we see the files here. So I can click on one of these files to download it. So I'll download one of these ZIM files. I'll just tap on it. It says, do I want to download it? I'll hit download. And now it's downloading here. And this is all dependent on your network speed, but it's probably running about as fast as any file transfer uh, method would use. Like if you're using uh, SSH, SCP, 
or SMB or things like that. Um, this is relatively fast because it's unencrypted. And I'm not sure where this is downloading. I think it's probably downloading it into files on this iPad. There we go. I'll hit the little magnifying glass. That should show me. And there we go. It's downloaded into my downloads folder. And of course I can open up, well, let me go back to my desktop. Refresh this. And of course I can open up JPEGs and things like that. And text files. So that's just a simple way that you can share files on your Mac with anyone without dealing with permission. It doesn't use encryption, but if you trust the network, um, it's good, it's fast, it's easy, and it should be compatible with pretty much any Mac that runs Python, which is maybe all of them. I don't know uh, 20 years ago if they did that. I know, with Mac OS X at least, I don't know when they added Python or if it's always been there, but certainly the most recent versions have always had Python. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.